next on the list we have this video of um the what, what, what what's his name what they call him the boss of his nickname right bruce springsteen sitting down with channel four talking about his essential hatred for trump and you know the how he's been acting with covid19 and i don't know um part of me wants to f ask people who are watching the video especially if you're an american citizen what do you feel what's your feeling when you see celebrities and entertainers coming out and telling you how to vote or imploring you to register to vote or telling you what to think about your president or telling you about what to think about a certain candidate like what's that make you feel like because i don't know if it was me and again i don't agree with you know most of the things that trump say anyway and it's, i don't really have a say in it because i'm fucking british it's not my place to say anything concerning your politics but i'd feel a little bit um I feel like it was a bit patronizing, like they're taking the piss out of me. Like these people in, these, in their ivory towers, in their gated communities, um, with their 24 hour security, with their kids in private school, with their healthcare looked after, with their endless amounts of resources that they're telling me how I should vote. When there might be something, there might be something to be said for, again, I don't know nothing about American politics, but I'm sure Trump has probably done some things that have benefited people further down the economic ladder. I'm sure he has done people in the middle class people in the working class I'm sure there are things that he's done that have benef benefited those group of people more so than they would benefit the people that are in a higher tax bracket or you know you know sit behind a, a, a gated community somewhere they must be they must exist because I'm I'm sure there's people in America um, who would deem to be working class who are not so keen on mass immigration for for just for the for the purely selfish reasons of that they don't want to they don't want to have more competition in their area of business they don't want people to come in set up businesses and essentially take away their ability to earn money and put food on the table for their families i'm pretty sure that exists there are obviously some xenophobic levels to it some racist levels to it bloody blah, blah blah some populist ideals behind it but i'm sure there are some people that just look at it in terms of economic levels and say hey i want immigration to be under some level of control some level of restrictions uh, available some tariffs sent some entry requirements blah 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 so that i can ensure that my garage that my diner survives i'm pretty sure that exists so when somebody like a you know a bruce springsteen who's w well intended you know he means best he means well he's not trying to be a dick comes out and tells you that that guy who that is allowing your business to keep on going is somehow a uh, a threat to democracy it, it, it definitely must irk you a bit it definitely must do it and especially if you're a fan of these music too right i guess it's not you know he, it's not fair for a fan of his to say hey you shouldn't be talking about politics i'm sure of it but there is a side of it where you're like it kind of will taint the music you're listening to especially if especially during these hard times right when you're going through whatever you're going through and you generally don't want any more upheaval in your country. You feel as if if you change political parties that you're going to cause a complete amount of drama and bloody blah, 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 blah. Or you're just voting just because, or you're not even voting. Let's say that regard, because there might be a lot of people that just won't even turn up because they just can't be bothered. There's too much, um, you know, trouble going on online and stuff on TV and stuff. It's just getting them annoyed. And then you're seeing people, you know, doing fashion shoots and runway shows. We just now saw a Louis Vuitton runway show with a t-shirt emblazoned with vote. And, you know, flipping louis vuitton a luxury fashion house based in the middle of flipping paris in the middle of france like it's got nothing to do with american politics whatsoever and they're telling you know imploring american citizens to go out there and vote it can just seem it can sense a bit um disingenuous a little bit patronizing and super annoying i would assume so but i don't know let me know if you're american um citizen what you think of it but i'll play um this clip here from uh channel four with bruce springsteen talking about his hatred i guess for trump and um the politics in general the trouble at the moment is is you have donald trump who is talking about rigged elections and he's not he has a feeling he's going to lose now which he, of course he is going to lose you're confident oh yeah oh yeah he's going to lose and uh, i don't think so mate gonna be a surprise and because let's think about it right 2020 has been a shit year 2020 has been a catastrophe right catastrophe from the big from the moment um this virus escaped wuhan and crossed over many many borders and covered many many nations we've all had a pretty dire year wouldn't it just be perfect way for 2020 to end for trump to get re-elected again by a landslide wouldn't that just make complete sense just again not saying i like the guy or not not don't like the guy but wouldn't that make complete sense part of me just thinks that's just that's just poetic way to end the year it just it just makes complete sense to me.
Now, if if uh, the other if, if Biden ends up winning, there will also be a bit of a turnout for the books. But that just seems too storybook. It just seems too romantic, too Disneyland, too Disney of an ending. The real ending is going to be like a James Cameron movie, right? Or like a what's his face, um, the guy from Inception movie, right? Or like a Quentin Tarantino movie or Martin Scorsese movie. It ends and it's not a happy ending. It's like you know. Your protagonist dies. Someone misses an arm. The child never comes back again. Like it's gonna be that. It's not an ending from Taken. He doesn't end up going to find his daughter again and again and again. This one, the daughter never comes back. He's such a flagrant, <laughs> toxic narcissist that he wants to take down the entire democratic system with him if he goes. If he could reflect on these things, maybe he'd have. Uh, but he's such an unreflective person. And uh, he hates him so much. He has no sense of decency, <clears throat> no sense of responsibility about it. And the words that he's been using over the past several weeks really are an attack on the entire democratic process. And is that dangerous? Yeah, it is. I think it's very dangerous. He does have a lot of people's ears. And, uh, uh, and again, if you're in the entertainment industry and you're saying Trump is dangerous, man, how about all these record executives that are fleecing young and aspiring musicians, essentially putting them into modern day slave deals, taking away their ability to make money, especially during COVID, right? If you're, if you're the Bruce Springsteen, you're fine. You have royalties for days. You have placements for days, money coming in, you know, whenever. But if you're young and up-and-coming artists, they take away your masters, they get you in a 360 deal, they take away your ability to stream. You only make pennies on a dollar with the amounts of streams that you do get. That's really exploitive, right? That's really a... Um, that's Forget damaging a democracy. That's essentially damaging an entire generation. A kids that are being essentially con Stockholm Syndrome convinced that they still need labels even to this day. But hey. Uh, I don't think he's going to go quietly into the you know, gently into the good night. I think he's going to uh, make a big a mess as he can. And uh, I don't know what that's going to mean, but we'll, we'll find out shortly. Hey, man, he's, he's free to say what he wants to say in it, but I guess for me, if, if, if I was an American citizen, I'd be annoyed hearing all these celebrities constantly telling me what I should vote or how I should vote or how I should think about somebody. It's none of your business, you know what I mean? Just, I wouldn't say sharp and dribble, but essentially, yeah, <laughs> sharp and dribble. It's too much. I kind of, I cannot do it, man. But hey, maybe I know something else so again. So let me know in the comments below. Maybe I'm off the mark on that way. But what do you think when celebrities tell you to go out and vote a certain way? Let me know in the comments down below. Talking about voting a certain way, um, Alex Jones, um, Trump's on and off friends. I'm not sure how what their relationship is at the moment. They seem to be friends one moment, then they're not friends. Alex Jones' relationship is similar to the relationship he has with Joe Rogan, where Joe feeds him information, but they never really says stuff about him positively in public and distances himself and, you know, the whole drama with his episodes on Spotify and blah, 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 blah. But we're not really sure where they sort of stand. Um, but Alex Jones basically gave us a little tidbit, a little bit of news regarding um, some things regarding Trump in terms of his eating habits, which I think were common knowledge. But he then obviously um, was able to maybe emphasize this in the light of the stuff that's going on with COVID and the fact of, you know, emphasizing Trump's love for McDonald's, which made me think, or fast food, which made me think, especially considering the collaboration with Travis Scott and Jay Balvin. Would McDonald's ever dare to do a collaboration with Donald Trump the same way they did it with Travis and Jay Balvin? Yes, I know, you know, politically it might be a bit of a suicide, uh, it might be a bit of a suicide, it might be suicidal in the same way it was suicidal when that Goya Beans guy went and spoke at the White House one time, right? But there is something to be said if you really want to, you know, become viral, if you really want to, you know, break the internet, do a collaboration with, with um, Donald Trump, help, like allow him to do his favorite meal. That would be a really good way to do it because supposedly Trump eats a lot of fast food because he's afraid of getting poisoned. And Alex Jones tells us some of that now. All guilty of it. Most of us are. <laughs> that we're sitting ducks. And, and Trump at 74 eating fast food. You know why he eats fast food? Look at the amount of papers these guys have. Why doesn't he have a, like, I wonder what he's fascination with his paper. Maybe it's a tactile thing, right? Because I am I knew I was like that when I used to, revi when I was revising in school, um, offering an exam, I found it a lot easier to, mem to remember things when I wrote it down. I guess there's some sort of, um, uh, there's some sort of uh, ability to remember things when you're, 
move hand is moving or you were seeing it in motion i don't know what it was but whatever it was i re i definitely um held information in my head longer or for the prerequisite amount of time that i need to do the exam when i write it down so if i if i was writing an essay if i was wanting to remember a certain answer to a certain question i would actually write the answer down in several different ways in different sort of paragraphs you know take out some letters take out some words blah 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 blah, blah. and that's where i did it but this fascination that he has with having papers during his broadcast of his show it's just weird because he can have all that information stored on a laptop or like a tablet or something. He doesn't need to have so many bits of paper. But I guess in his side of it, I'd think if you're a conspiracy theorist, you usually print those things out because you're afraid if you don't, they're going to update the stuff on there and on the back end, change titles, change dates of uploading because you can do that sometimes with regards to websites. So you don't have a hardcore, you don't have a hard record of it. And this is probably what he does have. But imagine the amount of paper Alex Jones goes through per broadcast or per show or per day per week like bloody hell he definitely doesn't believe in global warming <laughs> that's food right they send the secret service around i was told this before it was in the news he likes it anyways but because they go to they'll, they'll go to one mcdonald's this time one burger king this time one wendy's that time he's because they don't trust these places they're not jacked with his food Can you imagine you know we'll just eat the white house food he doesn't trust them He's got spies all around him. It's crazy. You know, I, Sean Hannity gets his food messed with. I know my food's been messed with. That's mad. <laughs> just <been> now. <laughs> they don't just take your bank accounts. They don't just take your credit card processing away. They don't just Deplatform you off the internet. They take your food and they put snot in it uh -huh. and boogers in it uh -huh. and they wipe their ass on it. And that's what <laughs> they do because that's what the left does. Is they're a bunch of cowards. They never fight up front. They have no chivalry. They have no bottom. They support pedophilia. Whoa, 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 whoa! You see how amazing he is. He starts off with a pretty decent point. He makes some good arguments for, you know, um, uh, the abolition, you know, absorb, destroying, deplatforming, getting rid of cancel culture. And suddenly he starts to go into <laughs> pedoph pedophilic rings and shit. Oh, he's the best. He really is the best in it. Good old Alex. You could always count on him.